Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Bank Shop Breakdown. We're going to go over five college basketball games for Monday, March 11th, 2024. And if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my college basketball bank shop best bet, you can find this at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Monday in College Hoops. First up, it's the semifinal round of the Horizon League Conference Tournament. This one between Cleveland State and Oakland. This one's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be on ESPNU. Cleveland State took care of business against IUPUI in the first round and had a nice win against Youngstown State by double digits on the road in the second round to get to this point. While Oakland, they took care of business against Purdue Fort Wayne, 75-65 in their first conference tournament game. Another nice double-digit win against a solid team in this conference. Two teams in great form, but in this matchup, I like the over. I'm looking at the total in this one. You know, Oakland, pretty fast-paced defensive team. It's because their defense isn't the best. I also think, you know, it's ranked one, right now 168th in adjusted defensive efficiency, but I think that's generous. When you look at the shot quality numbers, the fact that they're ranked 226th in three-point defense, I don't love this Grizzlies defense, but I do think Oakland's offense is the real deal. They take care of the basketball. They're a great shooting team. They're top 45 in free throw shooting as a team as well. Oakland's offense should be, you know, more than fine in this game. Cleveland State's defense ranked 264th in adjusted defensive efficiency. They're also a miserable defensive rebounding team. So Oakland should get a lot of second chance looks in this game. I expect a lot of points in this one. go with the over in Cleveland State, Oakland. Next up, we see Santa Clara and St. Mary's. This one's going to be 9 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be on ESPN. You know, this game is similar to the San Francisco-Gonzaga game that we're also going to talk about later. But, you know, St. Mary's and Gonzaga got the bye in the first few rounds of this conference tournament. And they haven't played in a while. You know, St. Mary's last game was March 2nd. And that was a loss against Gonzaga by double digits. It wasn't a great performance. You know, St. Mary's has been so dominant in conference play this year. It's a little bit concerning to see them get crushed in that ball game and now have to play at a neutral site against a solid team, a pesky team in Santa Clara. You know, Santa Clara, we've seen that, you know, the first game against St. Mary's in the season series, they got absolutely crushed, but they were much more competitive in the second meeting. And that was actually a game at St. Mary's. It was an 82 to 77 final score. In a game where uh, you know Santa Clara offensively was much sharper, they had a good uh, day from the perimeter in that one. They had 22 free throw attempts and 16 offensive rebounds. Not easy to do against a you know solid St. Mary's defense and a good defensive rebounding team is ranked third in the country. But Santa Clara can certainly compete with St. Mary's on the glass. Santa Clara also one of the best rebounding teams in the nation. And to me, at a neutral site, you know St. Mary's we saw in non-conference play when they stepped it up in competition and when they played these neutral site games, they did not fare well. They have neutral site losses against San Diego State, Xavier in an absolute blowout, and the semi-road loss against Boise State. They have one neutral site win, and it was a double overtime win by two points against UNLV. So I don't feel like laying a lot of points with St. Mary's, even though I love the St. Mary's team. I, I think they're dangerous, and I, you know I, I do think they're they had a great season, but. I don't want to lay this many points on a neutral site with a team we just haven't seen be able to cover these numbers, especially with their offense. You know, they're a slow-paced team. Points are at a premium, and this many points, I think it's too many. So give me Santa Clara plus the points. Next up, we see Northern Kentucky and Milwaukee. This one, 930 Eastern, is going to be on ESPN2, the other game of the Horizon League Conference Tournament semifinal round. And in this one, we have a pretty good matchup on our hands, kind of different styles of play here. Uh, Milwaukee, very potent offense. They're very fast-paced offensively, so they do score a lot of points. Great offensive rebounding team, and they should get a lot of second-chance looks in this game because Northern Kentucky is not a very good defensive rebounding team. However, the same thing can be said on the other side. Milwaukee, 330th in th defensive rebounding percentage. Northern Kentucky, a pretty solid offensive rebounding team. So both teams should get a lot of second-chance looks in this ball game. The difference for me, I just trust Northern Kentucky's defense a lot more. Uh, they force turnovers. They're a great three-point defense. Milwaukee's ranked 318th in adjusted defensive efficiency. They give up a lot of points, and I do think the Norse should get a lot of fast break points in this game because Milwaukee turns the ball over a ton. Like I said, Northern Kentucky great at forcing those turnovers. They're 35th in the country. So a lot of fast break points for Northern Kentucky in this one. You know, these teams split the season series. The last game was a Milwaukee win, 73-72 to at home. However, the first game at Northern Kentucky was an 18-point loss. Northern Kentucky is the more experienced team. They have one of the most experienced players in mid-major college basketball in Warwick. And I, I think they win this game. I'm going to go Northern Kentucky here and lay the points. Next up, we see Portland State and Montana. This one's going to be a 10 p.m. Eastern start time. It's going to be on ESPN+. Plus. It's the Big Sky Conference Tournament set, uh, quarterfinal round. And this is a game where I think Montana, honestly, if they can win this conference tournament, 
They could be a very, very dangerous team in the big dance, uh, probably a 14, maybe 15 seed if they did so. And I think that they, out of, out of those seeds, they have a really good chance of pulling off an upset because this is an experienced team, a 30th in experience in Division One college basketball. They had a great conference season, 12-6 and six record. They were 21-10 and 10 overall. They played a pretty tough non-conference schedule. They played games against Houston, Nevada, Oregon. They had a win against UC Davis twice in non-conference play. And uh, offensively, this is a really dangerous team. They're a great shooting team, 39th in the country in effective field goal percentage. They take great care of the basketball. They're also really responsible on the defensive glass. So while they're not, not a very good defensive team, as most Big Sky teams aren't, they still limit teams to one shot per trip. They have a top 200 two-point defense. And uh, when, when games are close, like this one could be you know, for a little period of time, Montana is the third best free throw shooting team in the country, 80.8% as a team. You know, Portland State, I think, actually had a pretty solid season. we got to remember, this is a program. It just hasn't had too many winning seasons in the last 5, 10 years. But this year, you know, they were competitive. They were 17 and 14 in the regular and overall this season. They were 8 and 10 in conference play. But I didn't love the, the form that they had at the end of the regular season. They lost three of the last four games, including a game against Montana by nine points. To me, Montana is just a much better team. We're getting them at a pretty decent price here because it's a neutral site. I'm going to go with the Grizzlies. Next up, we see San Francisco and Gonzaga. This one's going to be the final game we talk about for the Monday card. 11.30 Eastern is going to be on ESPN2. Of course, the semifinal game as well, the other semifinal game in the West Coast Conference Tournament. And, you know, similar to the first game we talked about in this conference, I worry a little bit about Gonzaga in this game in terms of covering a spread. I still think they could very well win this ball game. However, they've been off for quite a while. You worry about the rust. You know, San Francisco had one day off in between its win against Portland and this game. And, you know, I do think that they can build off some of that momentum winning and covering that game 72 to 51 against a Portland team that was starting to pick it up as the at the end of the regular season. You know, San Francisco, you know, they have struggled against Gonzaga for sure this season and in years prior. But Nonetheless, it's still a solid San Francisco team. They're top 40 in adjusted defensive efficiency, a great shooting team. They're top 15 in two-point shooting as a team, and they're also a good free-throw shooting team. So if the game is close late, you know the Dons have a good chance of keeping it competitive. I, I just think it's too many points at a neutral site location. Gonzaga, I'd much rather take them at home. Uh, to me, it was. I just think it's too many points. I'm going to go with San Francisco here plus the points. I do think Gonzaga wins the game, but I think San Francisco covers. And that's it. Those are the games for Monday in college basketball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Rod Manelli. Good luck.